Rex Ryan fired by the Buffalo Bills, a move we all knew was coming at some point. You were ahead of the curve on this one. Why now as opposed to after week 17? Well, I, I, really, I think the question is, why didn't it happen three weeks ago when at that point the push had already been on among people in that front office? The team president, the general manager, had been in owner Terry Pagula's ear for weeks at that point. And really, when they were not that competitive against the Steelers, it almost happened that night. It almost happened again that Monday morning. Ultimately, Terry Pagula decided he wasn't ready to do that just yet. But make no mistake, Anthony Lynn was always going to be the next guy. Uh, they were going to make a quarterback change, as I reported three weeks ago, as soon as the owner did get around to saying, I've seen enough of Rex. And I think, really, you have to go back to that game, right? Ten men on the field. A, one point, they're at the 17-yard line, end up out of field goal range. Third and five in field goal range, delay a game penalty, end up missing uh, a potential field goal. Punting in overtime when you're fighting for your playoff lives. So, yeah, all of that combined with him, you know, basically already – uh, from a coach's standpoint, being something of a dead man walking, ends up with him fired a few days after Christmas. So he gets fired by the Jets. Now he gets fired by the Bills. What's next for Rex, Rex Ryan? Is he going to be a television personality? Does he stay in coaching? What do you think? What's next is, is what we're doing right here, is yapping about football. He's got a big personality. He loves the camera. The camera loves him. He's got a lot of that John Madden boom stuff in him. Uh, it's a natural fit. People close to him have, have basically been telling me for weeks that he was just waiting for the Pagulas to let him go because there will be opportunities to be a broadcaster on somebody's studio show, on some network that broadcasts NFL football, and it's just a matter of time before he cements that. Oh, and he's also going to be paid very handsomely by the Buffalo Bills for a couple more years. And there's a natural tie-in for, like, any kind of a commercial, go eat a snack, we remember that from Hard Knocks, unforgettable. Oh, oh yeah, a, a GD snack, yes. That's right. How about, as yeah. we spin it forward for Buffalo, is this an attractive coaching vacancy as far as the Bills are concerned? Uh, not particularly, no. Uh, they're keeping, uh, everything I hear, they're keeping their front office intact. That front office has been rife with, with fat fissures and fractures and dissent. It didn't work out with them in Doug Marone. It didn't work out with them in Rex Ryan. Uh, again, Anthony Lynn, their, their uh, interim head coach, is going to have a very good opportunity to keep this job. Um, and, and no, I mean, Terry Pagola is still seemingly finding his feet as an NFL owner. And really, you, the real question moving forward is at some point, does he scrap everything there and start over? He thought he had Bill Polian a couple years ago. Polian pulled out at the last minute because he didn't want to restart the clock on his Hall of Fame process. Now that ship has sailed. I think the question is, at some point, does he bring in an overarching football czar? Uh, whether it's, you know, again, Polian maybe in the past or Tom Coughlin. Maybe a year from now, if Coughlin doesn't get a head coaching job, does someone eventually fill that role for Pagula in cleaning that building up? Here's the clock I'm aware of. 17 years since the Bills have gone to the playoffs. That's hard to accept for a fan base that can be so passionate. What do you think Bills fans can look forward to? Where's their cause for hope? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Um, Tom Brady can't play forever, right? Yes. Chad Pennington. Belichick eventually won't coach the Patriots, right? Right. So you're saying it has okay. to huh. be those so. things that change. Uh, on the topic of the Bills quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, he's not going to play in the season finale. E.J. Manuel gets the start. Nope. Is Tyrod Taylor the next one out in Buffalo? Well, they, they don't want to pick up that option. They made that decision weeks ago when I reported that, hey, they were trying to get Rex out and get Tyrod pushed to the curb as well. Didn't want him to get injured, have anything about future guarantees or injury guarantees. None of that come into play. The 30-odd million, he's, he would be guaranteed if he's on their roster. Um, I think it's the fifth day of the league year. Uh, that's not going to happen. Now, could he be there at something less than $16 million a year? You know, possibly. But if I'm Tyrod Taylor at this point, I I'd, I'd might as well go ahead and see what could – you know, what the market would bear for me. This isn't an overwhelming crop of free agent quarterbacks. This is not a good quarterback draft. And, yeah, Garoppolo might get dealt. And, yeah, Cutler might get dealt. And, yeah, Romo might get dealt. But as you watch football every week, there, there, there's a lot of quarterback need out there. Supply doesn't ever really meet demand. So uh, he won't be back there on that current contract. 
Fascinating. We certainly know the Cleveland Browns enjoyed their holiday weekend, getting their first win of the season over the San Diego Chargers. The big one. Mike McCoy, probably not as happy about it. Is it a lock? There's someone else coaching this Chargers team next season. Yeah, it is. I reported going into Sunday's games that regardless of the outcome against Cleveland, that the front office was already starting to do their due diligence on other potential candidates. We're trying to figure out what direction that they needed to go in and that Mike McCoy was not going to be back with the Chargers. And, and, and he knows this. It's, it's, you know, it's just a matter of time. And, and in this case, you know, Dean Spanos will wait for the season to be over. I think the question is how big of a splash do the Chargers make? It, it's virtually inconceivable they're not going to L.A. at this point. So if you're going to be in L.A., with another team that's also trying to hire a head coach, you're battling for the hearts, minds, and wallets of these fickle football fans who, frankly, would rather watch whatever the best doubleheader game is on any given weekend than the hometown football product. So I think the question is how wide of a net do the Chargers cast? I'm told it would be very wide. And do they explore uncharger-like things like trading for a Sean Payton and being willing to pay him over $9 million a year? I wouldn't rule it out. How dare you criticize the fans of Los Angeles? I'm from Los Angeles and actually you're 100% right. We are fickle and we don't go I'm to I'm just looking at the ratings. The, no, the Rams aren't the highest rated game there most weekends. It's tough. You're right. Now, you mentioned the Saints, Sean Payton. Could this happen for the Saints? Absolutely. How realistic is this as an offseason possibility? And where are some potential landing spots in addition to the Chargers? It's very realistic. I mean, you've got a situation there where he's been there about 10 years. Yes, he signed that extension, but it was sort of under duress last year. And it was only after situations in college jobs and with the Indianapolis Colts didn't work out. You've only got Drew Brees there for one more year. This is a third straight year outside the playoffs. You've got an ownership group, Tom Benson, who is in declining health. There's been a fight over who's going to get that franchise moving forward. Will it be his wife or will it be his daughter? They're, they're not making money on the NBA side. And you got a coach there, you owe $40 million more to, and you're winning six, seven games a year. So you could take that money and reinvest it in your product on the field. And in the meantime, while you're rebuilding, pay somebody $2.5 million a year to coach your team. So, yeah, it's realistic as long as potential suitors show up. If you call them, you can get Sean Payton, and the price won't be as steep as you may be thinking. I mean, he would make sense for either L.A. team. Um, you know, I th look, frankly, he'd be an upgrade over a lot of coaches in this league. It just depends on which owners out there are willing to think a little bit outside the box, think big, and go ahead and get moving with New Orleans and make a few phone calls. And he's willing to kick on side in a big moment because that's who Sean Payton is. Any under-the-radar yes, potential firings that we should be on the lookout for? Uh, under the radar? I mean, look, there, there are certainly uh, situations where the coach is still waiting in the balance. Indianapolis, you know, what does... I know what Ursay said publicly. What does he ultimately do if, oh, say, there's 30,000 empty seats in his stadium for a game against Jacksonville this Sunday? You've got Chip Kelly, whose fate is in the balance based on who replaces Trent Balky and what they want to do in terms of a head coach moving forward. Um, and then, you know... There's a couple of situations like Arizona where I've continued to hear that there's people very close to Bruce Arians, family members, who feel like for health reasons, you know, going through that grind a whole nother 12 months through that ringer, uh, is that really what's best for him at this stage of his career and this stage of his life? I know he's rebuffed that and said, I'm not thinking that way, but we'll see what happens in a few weeks when he does sit down with his family and, and, and you know, decide what he wants to do moving forward. Back on Chip Kelly, there was a time when he left Oregon where he was so highly thought of and so well regarded. Now to think back on the last few years for him, the disaster with the Eagles, how things have gone with the 49ers, what is the perception of him around the league among decision makers? I think you have to look at the 49ers situation. I mean, he was toxic last year. The only people who wanted to bring him in for an interview was San Francisco. And San Francisco, you know, wasn't hitting it off with people like Adam Gase. There were people who were interviewing there who weren't really interested. Concerns about Trent Balky still being the GM. Concerns about ownership and, you know, how they handled the Jim Harbaugh situation and the fallout of that. Uh, they haven't won there in forever other than those Harbaugh years. And then they didn't want to give him the building and the money when he deserved it. So... Uh, a lot of trepidation. Let's face it, that was a marriage of desperation last year, and it makes the Jim Tom Sula year look like a Lombardi Trophy year by comparison. So, no, Chip Kelly is not good. Remember, he bailed on Tampa. You know, people end up losing their jobs in Tampa. They thought they had him. He pulls out in the middle of the night, says, no, no, I'm staying in Oregon another year. 
you know, nine months later, everybody's fired there. So it, it has from that beginning to this possibly the end, not real pretty except for that first year or so in Philadelphia.